Welcome to Gen Tech's Apocalyptic Survival Guide. Congratulations on purchasing your limited edition Gen Tech Survival Box set. In this series, we'll be going over the most fundamental skills needed to survive the very likely event of a zombie apocalypse. While the rest of the world is descending into anarchy and chaos, fighting for their lives to their inevitable impending doom, you can just sit back, relax, and feel rest assured that you have everything you will ever need to be the biggest, baddest survivor in your neighborhood. So let's begin. No matter how good you are at scavenging, eventually all of the food on the map will be exhausted. Once the power fails, a significant portion of the usable food will rot and become inedible. You cannot continue to survive without finding new, sustainable sources of food. Of these, farming requires the most work, but also appears to give the most rewards. Combining your harvested crops with fish or trapped animals can make significant meals that will replenish hunger, thirst, and unhappiness simultaneously. Character Creation this step can often be skipped, however choosing the right occupation and traits can rapidly increase the rate in which it takes to level up the farming skill. There is only one of each occupation and trait that will help with farming. The farmer occupation will give the player three farming skill levels, but it will also give an experience boost to that skill. This bonus cannot be gained after the character is created. This is the same for every major skill. Preparing your garden Choose a good location for your farm, zombies can trample your crops. This will damage or kill them. You must plan in a place where zombies can't get to them while still allowing sunlight in. One option is to build walls around the area you will plant in. Another option is to plant on top of a second story where zombies cannot access easily. Moving dirt, to move dirt to your chosen location you need to have a shovel and sacks. Equip the shovel in both hands, Put the sacks in your main inventory. Right click on an area with dirt. Grass is a safe bet, but there is only one layer of usable dirt per tile. Click take some dirt, sack. Each sack can hold four, four tiles of dirt. Right click on the tile you want to drop the dirt on. Click spill dirt to dirt bag. Repeat until you have enough tiles for the amount of crops you want to plant. Note, you may want to put space between your farming plots to prevent the spread of disease. Alternatively, you can treat diseases before they spread, without the need for spacing. Preparing the dirt tiles. 1. Make sure the trowel is in the main inventory. 2. Right-click on a nearby section of land, and then select Dig. 3. A patch of dirt with three furrows should appear. Planting seeds. 1. Verify you have some sort of water in your inventory to water your seeds with. You will generally need 50 plus units of water per tile. 2. Right-click on a tile you've tilled, a tile with three furrows. Click Sow Seed, greater than crop name. 3. Right-click on the newly planted seeds and select Info. Leave this window open to the side so you can see how well watered your crops are. 4. Immediately water the crop by right-clicking and choosing Water and Number of Units. I suggest you start by watering all crops with at least 50 units. 5. Continue watering in 5 to 10 unit increments until the crop info box says well watered. Growing time crops will take different lengths of time to grow depending on what seeds are planted. Crops progress through basic stages of growth, as shown here. Fertilizer Fertilizing your crops will help them grow more quickly. If you use NPK fertilizer, it will remove 20 hours off of the current growth cycle of the plant. If there are less than 20 hours remaining on that growth cycle, it will immediately proceed to the next level and the extra hours will be lost. Generally, fertilizer is hard to come by for the large farms needed to sustain yourself, so it should only be used in an emergency to speed plant growth when food is getting scarce. Using too much fertilizer on a plant will kill it in around 4-5 to five uses. You can make your own fertilizer as long as you have level 5 of carpentry and some rotten food. You'll need to build a composter and once you have built it you can place perishable food that has gone rotten inside. Usually it takes two weeks to get some fertilizer. You'll need a sack to get the fertilizer and then you can use it on your plants. Growing crops. Watering. Remember to keep your crops in the well watered state. You will need to check them at least once per day unless it is raining. A watering can will speed up this process significantly. If you're low on water, you will have to hope that it rains often enough to keep your crops watered. 
Placing rain collector barrels around your garden, to collect rain will be necessary to make sure you don't lose a harvest of crops and starve. Place them near your garden so you don't have to walk far to fill up your watering can. If you haven't got a high enough carpentry skill, a variety of water storage containers have a rain factor, which allows them to be filled when placed in the rain. Threats to your crops. Zombies. Your immediate problem is the constant threat of zombies. Zombies can trample your crops and force your hard work and water into waste. Keep zombies away from your crops. Zombies may go inside some of your nearly grown crops and may try to ambush you. Try to plant in a secure location and always check for zombies in your crops before turning your back to the crops. Crawlers, the zombies that crawl on the ground rather than walk around, may go unseen in almost fully grown crops. Growing crops on patches with zombie blood causes the seedlings to become instantly sickly. Plants can be afflicted by the diseases listed above, and diseases can jump from plant to plant in close proximity. Strawberries have been reported to be particularly susceptible to disease. The best solutions to keeping disease to a minimum are to treat all infestations as soon as they appear, and to either grow strawberries in an area that is totally separate from your other plants, preferably enclosed within walls and a door, or not to grow strawberries at all. Plant disease problems. Mildew causes your plants to mature more slowly than they would normally. Insects cause a growing plant to consume more water. Affected plants will need considerably more water and attention than healthy plants. Devil's water fungi, DWF, is arguably the biggest danger to your garden since it causes plants that are harvested to give smaller yields than healthy plants, and there is no countermeasure to fight it with, so it can quickly get out of control. DWF regularly occurs on plants that have been infected with either mildew or pest flies for some time, so keep those two diseases under control and should keep DWF to a minimum. If a plant is very close to harvesting, it is usually worth removing plants affected with DWF as soon as possible since the biggest threat is that of DWF spreading to your other plants. Making plant disease cures. Either the gardening trait, farmer profession, or read, a farming magazine. All of these are needed to craft these items. Note, even rotten milk can be used to make mildew spray. Plant health. When you sow seeds to grow crops, a plant's starting health is determined by your farming skill. The higher your skill, the higher the starting health. The health, as denoted as a percentage, increases slowly over time, unless affected by disease or inappropriate water levels. Currently, radishes and carrots have a maximum water level and thus can be overwatered, causing them to lose health. It is recommended to grow these crops in an indoors slash roof farm area, so that rain doesn't cause them to lose health from overwatering. The health of a plant determines the size of the yield upon harvest. Seeds are given to the character when a plant is harvested during its seed bearing phase. This is the last phase of a plant's life, and appears after the plant is able to be harvested solely for food. Well that should be everything. On the next lesson, we will be covering the fishing skill. You should find the next cassette tape labeled with a number 2 labeled on your survival guide box set. Thank you for watching and we hope you survive long enough for the next one. Bye for now.